I think the one I can remember is um, Kenny taking over from Roy here. I think uh, Roy Hodgson's final days and weeks here were very tough for him personally, but you could feel it as a player. Yeah. Mm. The, the tension in the crowd, you know, they were singing Kenny's name every five, ten minutes. Um, and I think before Roy was announced to be the manager, I think the majority of the fans wanted Kenny in anyway. Um, so yeah, the final days of Roy's were tough, and then when Kenny came, the atmosphere changed in the ground and in the club, and you know the players sort of got a lift from that because it was uncomfortable playing uh, in the atmosphere under Roy. It, it felt it felt tense, and I think the players you could feel them going into a shell. But when Kenny came, it just seemed to lift, and you, and you got that manager. So, so as players, did you give more? Under Kenny Dalglish, I didn't because you know I, I don't I don't play general, no but no but I don't play for a manager. For manager yeah. Yeah. I, I turn up to work on a Monday myself and and I have values and principles in myself that I give every single day and then I take the Monday to Friday into the game. So if Liverpool didn't have a manager, I would still give exactly the same effort and commitment and desire for the badge do and for the fans. Mates have that same approach. Do you, do you want me to phone them all and ask them? No, but they should <laughs> do. Memory, if you're a winner, you should do. And him, as the captain of this team, would see at the training grounds. And if people were walking around and not not giving a, a monkeys, he'd be on at them. Oi. The, the fans as well. The yeah. fans would be on. Them. Mad. So you're not allowed. You're not allowed to. Otherwise, you don't play on a Saturday. If you don't, don't give a if you don't care in training mm. and you think you can just walk around and mess around, then go away because you're affecting him and him and mm. him. You can't carry anybody out on the field on a Saturday, so you might as well not be there. Were there any situations, though, Stevie, where when Roy was manager and you said yourself it felt tense that there were players that were targeted by the fans that would then have a negative effect no, on I the think, way No, I think play? Roy took the blame. Um, I think the manager weren't happy with some of his signings. Um, but you know yourself, when you're playing and the crowd are tense yeah, yeah. and they get on the, the players and the teams back, you know yourself, you, yeah. you maybe don't try something or you sort of go mm. safe. Um, and that's me talking as an experienced mm. player, as yeah, the captain. So it yeah. probably had a bigger I impact on, on all also, the other players. Some players get more affected by the atmosphere. Yeah. In a, in Especially a, in lesser, younger, lesser players, younger, less experienced, young. young players. Yeah. yeah if they give a ball away and the crowd go, oh. the next time, as Stephen rightly said, they're not going to try a nice pass down the line. They're just going to go centre half. Correct. And every time they yeah. get it, a simple that, pass. That'll be happening now at Everton. Every, at, yeah. at West, West Brom. West Brom. Yeah. People will be playing within themselves mm. because confidence will be low. Um, the fans will be on them, it'll be tense. And, and then that affects individual and, and, and team play. And when that happens, are you, are you out there as a footballer thinking, why are, you, why are you doing this? Like, if you're not happy with the manager, fine, but you're affecting the players. This, is, this isn't productive. But that's all, it's, uh, that has always happened. You have to fight through it. You have to get through it. You have to play hard. You have to win a game. You have to get everybody behind you. How many times have you heard that? Oh, we're probably better playing away from home because there's less less of your fans there. They'll get they'll get out shouted, so you feel a little bit more confident. But you have to get through that. How are you ever going to succeed if you can't take a little bit of criticism off somebody and get on and move forward? Mm, okay. And f finally, maybe it tells us something as well, doesn't it, about what life was like under Mark Hughes at Stoke? If a player is coming out and saying, "Oh, we're trying harder. We're winning tackles. We're running a bit more." I think that's harsh. If you would you interview Mark Hughes? Oh, if you, I think Hughes, yeah. if you look at some of the you things think... that Mark Hughes, I think Mark Hughes took Stoke to their highest ever finish within yeah. the Premier League as well. All, most of their uh, finishes were in the top half. Granted, this year, you know, it, it, it seemed to all fall apart for Mark Hughes and Stoke. Yeah. But I think just to kind of to, to throw that accusation at Mark Hughes, you'd be ra yeah. you'd be raging. Yeah. Based finishing, on what he's done, finishing that, ninth think, in the league, you right, can't right, right, right. be angry reading that, do you? Yeah, yeah. I think it's a poor quote. Yeah. Because I think under Mark Hughes, the Stoke players were trying and mm. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I don't think they weren't running around and they weren't tackling. For me, I think it's a poor call. Yeah, I, watched, I watched Stoke a lot of times last year. I think they finished ninth, forgive me if I'm wrong. I think they did, and they played teams, Arsenal's and things. And every time I seen them, every time I went to Stoke and watched them, I thought they gave their all. I really did. Yeah. R win, lose or draw. I thought, you know what, they've tried hard, they've worked hard. And when I look at the likes of, I don't know, Shaw crosses and people like that who've been there for a few years, don't tell me they don't try. Don't tell me they don't give everything for every single game. Yeah. They might go through bad patches with injuries and stuff, but you can't level, that. You can't level a lot, lot of that on a lot of the players. I think it's worth pointing this out, actually. We've, uh, we've got the, the stats here, I believe, that we can, we can compare them. Look at this. So this is under Mark Hughes um, and under Paul Lambert this season. This is per game. Um, and as you can say, they covered a little bit further under Mark Hughes. Um, yeah, there you go. So course. actually, there isn't much in it. But maybe, you know, to, to, give, um, to give Jack Butland... 
um, yeah. a bit of credit or to be fair to him maybe he's just trying to say positive stuff yeah, about life maybe, on the pool maybe, number, maybe, maybe, it just, maybe it also just feels better for whatever reason you know but yeah but he's got to think before he says stuff like that and have some respect for the previous staff that have gone out um, if he's got the stats to back it up what he's saying and it's right then yeah say it but mm. I think he's said something that's got no substance